Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Polkadot. Polkadot is continuing with its correction here. Um, we are still in my view in this A, B, C correction and I'm still waiting for my price target area to be hit, which is sitting between $6.50 and um, yeah, pretty much $11. Yeah? So this is sitting still between the 0.887 FIP level, yeah, it's $6.42 here on the chart and the 0.786 FIP level at 11.33. Um, and this is where I would expect the price to land, yeah. And I'm basically, you know, it, it basically is confirmed in my view by the current downtrend. You've got a downtrending line here, descending trend line. We're still very far away from that. Um, you can actually probably, as how this looks, even um, extend this and then you've got some sort of a channel here. So I'm gonna take out all these small lines here. But, um, so ABC, yeah, then you're gonna, and you can see actually that we here have a channel um, that Polkadot is currently adhering to. And if we see here a bit of an upside, we could even get up without breaking that channel. Let's say that happened today, we could even move up to 25, dollars, you know, and we would probably still be in this descending channel until we really break one of the first moving averages here, the 20 day moving average at around $23 or better the 50 or even the 200 day moving average. Until then, I think we are remaining in the downtrend. You know, there is no positive confirmation. Really, we had the death cross here on the 11th of January of the 50 day moving average um, and the 200 and the 50 day moving average. You can see it here coming down in orange that is basically running very parallelly uh, on top of this um, resistance line of that channel. So yeah, and Polkadot is now at the lower end of the channel. Very recently here broke below the 0.618 FIP level at $19.50. So when that happened, um, yeah, I became even more convinced that the correction isn't over yet and that we're gonna move down lower. We're currently even here um, despite Bitcoin moving up a little bit, I mean, Polkadot is just not moving. Polkadot is only moving sideways. And I think what we're building here is just a bear flag. Yeah. So what you have here overall is that flagpole and then you're building here this larger wave, uh, this larger pattern, depending on how you want to draw it. Um, that might not be how it's eventually going to look like, but pretty much a triangle pattern here. Move down, consolidation, consolidation required because for example, on the four hour chart, we were just oversold. And I had a few questions about oversold. Oversold just means on the RSI, on the momentum indicator that you are below 30. So depending on which time frame you're looking at, um, obviously the shorter time frames are more volatile and swing more frequently. But if it's oversold, it typically means you see a bit of a reaction to the upside. For example, if it's oversold, it means um, that there isn't likely uh, another drop coming. So we see a little bit of upside, which we saw here, the RSI, uh, the price moving up, drop down then again, moving up again. And it's just a momentum indicator. Yeah. So it indicates, um, is the momentum still going down? And here you can see why is the RSI going up? It's not necessarily moving up with the price. It's just moving up because the momentum has shifted. The momentum is not compared to what it was before. It's not going down that strongly anymore. It's now moving sideways. And therefore you can see that the RSI is just moving up because compared to the, pre to the previous period, the downtrend um, has basically stopped temporarily. So um, yeah, and you can only go so much down on that RSI, then people will use it as an indicator and will start buying again. And uh, however, as always, the higher time frame indicators are more meaningful. We're still very close to the oversold level on the daily RSI. So I think we need to see a bit of further sideways movement or upside before we can really get into this area down here. But bear in mind, getting into my target area doesn't mean we need to spend a lot of time in there. It could just be a wick or something touching that $11.40 level. So um, yeah, that's all Polkadot is doing now, just re retracing a little bit or consolidating a little bit before there will probably be another downside move. And just because we're moving up temporarily doesn't mean the downtrend is over. As I said, there are a few things that we need to move beyond. First of all is the 0.618 FIP level. For that, we need to move above 1950. But even if we do that, I think all we do and get to will be first the 20 day moving average sitting now at $22.40, then to that top or we need to break out of the channel first. If we break out of the channel, 
then yeah, then it's looking interesting because then you have broken a descending trend line. You've broken uh, basically one, um, yeah, one indicator on the chart that shows basically that the downtrend is still in place. But even then, I would want it to really get a confirmation. I would want to see us breaking um, here those previous highs. So you want to make sure that you make a lower, a higher low and a higher high. Then you can say that the previous structure is sort of invalidated and that you start to really go above these previous highs here and then we can look at further upside um, but uh, they are obviously on that way and if you really want to wait for a confirmation you're basically getting um, yeah you're gonna lose some of that potential profit um, because you can only you, know, you wait for a confirmation so you have to see some further upside before you actually go in that's why you know if, if someone really likes the project and that's what I do if I like a project if I think a project has further upside potential in the future I'm dollar cost averaging in. Um, I will start shortly. I think my first buy order for Polkadot hasn't triggered yet. I'm waiting for further downside. Um, and uh, this should be in the area between six, as I said, 650 roughly and 1140. Um, yeah, and then if we, as soon as we see the downside here, that further downside um, or that $11.40 or $11.30 level being reached. Here, the chances of the Polkadot price chart increase that it will turn around and we're going to see a bullish move up. I think that should be rather a, a fast move, as I said before, and could really take us all the way up to at least $80. That's the 1.618 extension, all the way to 130, I think, 128, um, which would be the 2.618 Fibonacci extension. It's hard to predict now which level there's gonna be. So we need to wait how that uptrend is going to start and how it's gonna look like. Um, but yeah, there is further downside potential and we can see that before we move up and we can see that still on the weekly RSI. Um, we've just probably found some support here on the weekly RSI on the uh, 40 level, but uh, the MACD is pointing further to the downside very, very clearly. And because of that, I would rather say that we're gonna see a little bit more downside here, especially on the four day chart, you can see that as well. Um, we found support here, yes, and it's recovering a little bit, but it was recovering here and then it started to move down again. Um, when we had here back in June, finally that, um, well, when we were on the way to the end of the correction, yeah, it was just moving up. What you see here, you were moving up and then you were moving down again, meaning that we had another sell off. So for me, that's still too, um, too much of a confirmation that yeah, the downtrend is still at, in place. There's nothing I can see here that would tell me otherwise at the moment. And until I see that on the chart, I have to assume that we're gonna see further downside, especially as we haven't seen that wave C play out yet. So the wave C should land below the wave A. And then we have uh, basically here in that area, we should be able to reset all of our indicators, bring them down nicely, and then be ready to start to a new all-time high. So in the end, nothing really has changed from my previous video. Um, it's just really to confirm the weakness in the chart at the moment because again, it's just moving sideways while other cryptos are really, really doing well at the moment. Um, Sand is picking up, you know, crypto.com is moving up a little bit, but all of that is just because Bitcoin, it just happens when Bitcoin is moving sideways, money flows a bit in the altcoins. Um, I have there rather a, a little bit more of a long-term view, wanna catch the larger waves and my buy, buy orders will trigger a little bit lower and if you're interested in seeing my buy and sell orders maybe check out the channel membership you can do that on my website you can find a link for that in the video description or you do it just here on youtube that's possible as well does all you also give you access to discord and telegram if you join as silver or gold member thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video bye bye